что происходит в России. What's going on with Russian culture? I can probably say in the style of Putin. It has died today. The Russian culture elite is leaving the country because they disagree with the Kremlin's policy. During the six months of Russia's war against Ukraine, thousands of cultural figures left the country. Musicians, artists, directors, dancers, actors. Some move away without any explanation, while others make no secret of their anti-war position. Famous conductor Thomas Zanderling is among them. Following the recent aggression of Russia in Ukraine and especially the violent bombing of Ukrainian cities and growth of totalitarianism in Russia, I felt that I had to resign as chief conductor and artistic director of the Novosibirsk Philharmonic Orchestra. Thomas Sunderlin, a Russian conductor from the article of Foreign Policy. Putin brings Russia into absolute isolation, including cultural isolation, Russian artists say. It is impossible for free artists in today's unfree Russia. All attempts at compromise destroy you as a free person and as an artist. This is what we see today in the sphere of Russian cinema and theater. And so it turns out that when you emigrate, even if you lose this multimillion audience, you preserve yourself as a free person, as a human being, which is far more valuable. Dissenters in Russia are fined, sentenced and imprisoned. Creative people are blacklisted or ostracized. Actress Leah Ahedjakova was one of those who was openly harassed for her civil position. Since 2014 she has been publicly condemning the Putin's regime. If you don't want to lose your job, your status and your money in Russia, don't say anything, says Marat Gelman. Silence is the smallest price to pay for the preservation of the team. If suddenly the authorities have doubts about someone, they call him up and say, you have to go to Donbass. And if he refuses, he is put on the blacklist, and today the blacklist is growing. Western artists are also cancelling their tours in Russia. Dozens of prominent and famous figures have refused loyalties and contracts because of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Among them are mezzo-soprano Elina Garancha and German bass baritone Thomas Kwasthoff. Western artists and directors boycott festivals which have always been a parrot sign for Russia. In Europe, Russian cultural figures are not ready to embrace either. Today, Russian artists abroad are banned, mainly because they are associated with the criminal, fascist regime of Putin and the abolition of Russian culture in general. And this campaign comes from citizens living in different countries. Culture and authorities are closely associated in Russia. The lion's share of the cultural market is financed by the Kremlin. Moscow needs the loyal people, and it is willing to pay well for loyalty. So it's not surprising that some of the cultural elite made a deal with their conscience, says Andrei Sidelnikov. There are those who have remained in the country, who have received financial support for all these years, who have received theaters for being in Putin's presidential campaigns. For example, Mr. Mashkov, Mr. Mironov, Gergiev. They chose a long time ago that finances are more important to them than their personal position. The choice for cultural figures is simple. Either you declare and prove your loyalty to Putin every time, or in the best case, leave the country. Such a censorship framework is destructive to culture, experts say. The mantra of a great Russian culture will soon risk turning into yet another myth of Russian propaganda. Reported by Roman Smoller, Yulia Hranovska, UATV News.